Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today I am going to make some egg bites. And I'm gonna do that in the Ninja Foodie 6.5 quart pressure cooker and air crisper. But I'm also gonna use the Ninja Foodie blender in this video. Now you do not have to have the Ninja Foodie hot cold blender or any blender to do this recipe. You can simply whip everything up by hand. But I have it and I love to use it and it makes such easy work of this recipe that I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So egg bites, I have seen a gazillion different recipes um, in Facebook groups and you know online and everybody just loves and raves about egg bites. But I have never liked them and I've tried different recipes and I've pressure cooked them on low and I've pressure cooked them on high and they've always just come out too rubbery and I don't like them. Either they're too rubbery or they're not set enough, you know? I could never get that fine balance. And then one morning I decided, you know what, let me use the steam function. And oh my goodness, were they delicious. And now I'm gonna share that technique with you. The recipe is just some ingredients that I had on hand and I'm gonna use in this recipe. But if you use the five eggs and heavy whipping cream or half and half or milk and put whatever other ingredients you want in there, you will end up with fantastic tasting egg bites as well. So I'm gonna start off with five eggs. So I'm just cracking the eggs into a separate bowl. You could crack them directly into the blender or whatever bowl you're gonna to use to whisk them up. I just put them in this bowl in case I get any shells and then I can just uh, pick them out before they go into the blender. Because you don't wanna be reaching down where those blades are in the blender. They are very, very sharp. I've already cut myself once. So use caution. <laughs> All right, so five whole eggs. And these are large eggs. They're from our chicken, so they vary in size, but um, I picked out five that look like they would be equivalent to large eggs in the grocery store, or even extra large is fine. All right, so we've got our eggs, and I'm just gonna dump that right into the Ninja Foodie Hot Cold Blender. And to that, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. That's just my preference because it really does give a beautiful texture and a nice rich flavor, but you could use whole milk, skim milk. You could even use water, it would be fine. Now the other ingredient that I'm gonna add in that is a, probably a little unusual is some cream cheese. This again gives this really nice creamy texture to your egg bite. You could omit it if you wanted or you could substitute it for cottage cheese. I see that in a lot of recipes and I'm sure that would work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out. Put that in. Then I have a, a half of a Vidalia, which is a sweet onion, and I'm gonna throw that in. And you can see, it's I didn't even cut it up because you don't need to. All right, now I'm gonna get this blended up. I'm not putting in my ham and my cheese yet. You could, if you didn't want any particles of the ham and cheese in your egg bite, if you wanted it to have the flavors but not any pieces, you could put it in now. But I want a little bit of texture in my, um, my egg bite, so I'm gonna hold off and put it in a little bit later. All right, so we get the blender lid on here, turn it on, and I'm just gonna go to the smoothie and just let it, let it do its thing. Okay, that's it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the blender and I'm gonna put in the ham and the cheese. Now that is one ounce of cubed Swiss cheese and two ounces of ham. And again, you could skip the ham and cheese, you could put in vegetables. Um, I put in some like little mini sweet red peppers one time and I put them in so that they there weren't any particles. I put them in right at the very beginning. The flavor was outstanding, but you didn't have any of the actual pepper when you bit into it. It was really smooth, creamy, kind of luxurious. Um, great tasting egg bite, to be honest. But this time I decided I'll just do ham and cheese because I had some leftover I needed to use. Now what I'm gonna do is just pulse. Of course, 
I pulse what three or four times and now my ham is in really small pieces. So if you wanted it to be in bigger pieces, just either hand chop it a little bit, um, you know, little like little small dices or just pulse once. Um, but I like just the little bit of hint of ham without a big chunk because I just think that it gives a better texture overall to the egg bite. All right, so that's it. Now we are done with that mixture. Um, the one, you know what I could do though, and let me go ahead and do that. Even though the ham is salty, um, I, and I'm not gonna add too much salt, I am gonna add a little bit of salt. And I should have done that before I put the ham in. So I'm gonna add just about a half of a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Again, totally optional, just my preference. And I'll put this lid back on and just give it one more little quick pulse. There we go, that's good enough. All right, so now the egg bite mold itself. You can spray this with um, you know, any kind of oil that you want, but I usually just brush it on the inside with butter. Now, when you pressure cook egg bites, I've noticed that no matter what I do, they seem to stick. That was one of the issues. And that's because the heat gets so hot under pressure that it actually overcooks the eggs and um, causes the, the protein in them to change and stick. I don't find that to be a problem when you steam them, but I still like to put the little bit of butter in there. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to clean them too, I think. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit on my silicone basting brush and just kind of go in there and just, just butter the sides and the bottom well. You don't need a whole lot. That looks good. Now, with the little bit of butter that's left on my brush here, I am just going to paint it on the back of my silicone cover. The only reason why I'm doing that is because the egg bites will rise as they cook, and if they hit the silicone cover and the silicone cover is um, not buttered or greased with oil, whatever, um, and it's hot, they could stick to the top. So I'm just gonna do that, just as a precaution. Not totally necessary, though. All right, so let me get all this out of the way. One thing real quick before I fill these up is I wanted to talk about the lid. Most of the egg bite molds will come with a plastic lid um, and they are not meant to go into the pressure cooker, uh, especially if you're pressure cooking. Um, it might be okay steaming, but I just prefer to use the silicone cover from Walfo's. I just, it's just my preference. But yeah, you shouldn't pressure cook with those from what I've heard. All right, so now let's get the blender here and we will pour in our egg mixture. Now, there will be some settling at the bottom. So what I do is I usually take this halfway for each one because the ham and the cheese is gonna be kind of at the bottom. So I take it about halfway and then when we get to the bottom, we will either, whoops, I went a little far on that one. We'll spoon in the ham into each one if it doesn't just pour out. You wanna take these to about three quarters of the way full. Not all the way, because like I said, they will rise up. I might have a little bit more in here. Maybe because I added more ingredients this time. So let me go ahead and get a spoon, because I wanna get down and get that ham for sure. Let me just grab this spoon here. Because the chunks of the ham and the cheese are in the bottom. We wanna get those in. Ooh, I can't wait for these. There's a little bit of the um, egg mixture left over. 
you know, you could either make another another batch. You could do the double batch at the same time. I know a lot of people do that with their egg bites. They'll actually get two of these and stack them. So you could probably one and a half this recipe and make two, two trays, I think, because I do have some left over. Probably enough for another three or four egg bites. And I'm filling them definitely three quarters of the way. I might even be going a little bit more because I hate to waste anything. The other thing you could do is probably take the eggs down to four eggs instead of five. But it depends on what ingredients you add in because I've made this recipe with all kinds of different ingredients and usually it will fill uh, seven of these little wells perfectly. And you know what? It really is because I'm only ending up with Gosh, just about, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon left over. So no big deal there. All right, put that back into the, I'm backwards. All right, now we're gonna get the lid on. And then what you wanna do when you're steaming in the Ninja Foodi is at least start off with two cups of water. Um, two cups is a good amount because obviously when we're steaming, we're gonna have evaporation of the water and you don't wanna run out of water before your food is cooked. It just creates all kinds of issues. So two cups of water is my general rule of thumb for steaming anywhere from five minutes up to 15 minutes. It, it seems to last that long. Um, if you're gonna steam longer, you might wanna add in three cups. But like for this recipe, don't say, oh, well, I'm just gonna err on the side of caution and put in three cups because you're, the time that it takes to start the steaming process and start the countdown will be greater and you will run the risk of overcooking your eggs if you go the full 12 minutes like we're gonna do. So two cups of water, room temperature water. And don't even heat up your water before this process. Yes, it will start the countdown sooner, but the problem is, is that you may undercook your eggs because I take into consideration the time that it takes to reach a full steam and start the countdown in this recipe. So two cups of room temperature water is what you wanna use. All right, put your egg bites on the tray. Let me just adjust them a little bit here. All right, that looks good. Now, some people don't even cover their egg bites, but I don't know. I just feel like we're steaming and I don't, I don't want water in my eggs, so I'm gonna cover them. That is totally up to you though. Some people don't do it and they say it works out just fine. All right, so now we're gonna put the lid on. Now, when you're steaming, you definitely want to put the valve to the vent position. When you are venting for the Ninja Foodi, you will feel it lift up and click. You wanna hear that and feel that click like that because it sits up on a ledge and makes sure that it doesn't fall back down into the ceiling position. Because even if you hit the steam function, if you are sealed, you are going to be pressure cooking, okay? Because the pot doesn't know the difference. It's going to pressure cook if you seal in the steam. So make sure that it's vented. Turn the Ninja Foodi on. And we're gonna go to the steam function. We want 12 minutes and hit start. Now, it's gonna take probably about five or seven minutes um, to start the countdown. So it's gonna be boiling the water, creating the steam. You may even see the little red button pop up during the process. Don't worry about that. It will pop up and it'll go back down sometimes. Sometimes it stays up for a prolonged period of time. Don't even worry about it. As long as you're vented, it'll be fine, you're not going under pressure. All right, so we just have a few seconds left on the 12 minute steaming process and I just wanted to let you know that this time my red pin did not pop up. Now some of the pins are not red. I've heard on the newer models they're actually silver so it doesn't matter what color, silver, red, whatever. Mine did not pop up this time. Sometimes it has and sometimes it doesn't. So mine did not. Um, now the other thing is it took nine minutes to start the countdown. So. That's fine, I thought a little be a little bit quicker, but that's okay. So nine minutes and now we've gone 12 minutes. And we don't have to do any kind of release on this because there is no pressure built in the Ninja Foodi. So we don't have to do any kind of a release. When it says done, we can just simply open up the lid. Do that away from you, this is steamy. All right, now I'm gonna pull the rack out and get the cover off. I always say it, just to just like cross my fingers just a little bit right now. 
I'm gonna leave these on to take this off. All right, let's lift. Ooh, they look perfect. Yay. They look good. They're all set in the middle. Um, I've tried a, a different time of like 10 minutes and sometimes they weren't set right like on the top or even in the middle. But these look like they're perfectly fine. So that's wonderful. Now what I'm gonna do is see if they just cool just a few minutes, will they start to pull away from the silicone? And it looks like this one over here is already starting to pull away. And that's what we wanna do. So we're just gonna leave them on this rack for a few minutes, let them start to pull away. Probably gonna get my cake tester and sort of help it along a little bit. Then we will pop them out and we'll taste them. And it's that easy. So these are super easy to make. They've been cooling uh, just maybe three or four minutes and I'm just going around with my cake tester. I use this thing a lot. I'm just going down the sides. You don't have to do this if you don't care. If they all come out perfectly, you don't have to do this, but um, it'd be a little embarrassing if they don't. But you know what? It's always a possibility, so don't freak out. One of mine may not come out. It doesn't matter, they will taste delicious. But it looks like these are pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and and do the flip. Oh boy, here we go. Will I get seven for seven? That is the thing. Hmm, let's see. I'm just gonna flip them out. You could flip them out onto the rack. You could flip them out onto your cutting board, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. And like if I was gonna serve them or something. So I'm just gonna use this here. Flip them all the way over. You could even let them cool a little bit longer if you wanted. And then I just sort of lightly squeeze until I feel like they're loose. They're a little hot, to be honest with you. This middle one feels like it's a little bit tighter. I will not be surprised if that one does not fall right out. You can even push. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see, did I get all seven out? I'm not sure. Oh, please. Well, I got six out. Now this little guy, you know what? He'll be right for me. It's not that he's not gonna come out fine. He is, he just didn't come out the same way. But anyway, there you go. So you've got these beautiful egg bites. All right, and they feel really pretty soft. Hopefully they're done in the center. What if they're not? Well, if they're not, put them back in and Get them back under steam for a few minutes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right like that. Okay, so that is perfect. You can see the cheese melted. The eggs are completely set, but they're nice and soft. I can tell that they're not gonna be rubbery. Oh my gosh, look, oh, I even got some cheese pull. Look at that, yay. All right, doesn't matter what they look like. Let's see what they taste like. Oh my goodness. These are so good. Mmm. Now this is exactly how I like my eggs. They are soft, but they are set. They are cooked all the way through. They are not rubbery at all. If you liked your egg bites a little bit firmer, I would go ahead and increase the steam time to about 14 or 15 minutes. But these are perfect for me. Mmm. Oh my gosh, they taste amazing. Now, the onion, you really get the flavor of the onion, but none of the onion pieces. And I like that, I really do. There is a little bit of texture from the ham, but not too much. It's really wonderful. The cheese is delicious in this. Mmm. Oh, these are perfection. I hope you give this technique a try. Switch up the ingredients any which way that you want. Spinach and sausage or just plain cheese, just plain egg, anything. You are gonna absolutely love these. They are delicious. And the great news is you can easily make them ahead of time and you can reheat them in the microwave. All you need to do is just put them on a plate in the microwave for 30 seconds to one minute and they will be heated through and they don't overcook.